think everybody. Why is fun almost over? Time flies when you're having fun with chemistry. Now, on Wednesday, I was showing you how to balance a chemical equation. Remember, my advice is leave hydrogen, oxygen to last. So let's start out the morning with something you can practice with, because it says practice with. Extra bonus two seconds. Time's up. Put down your pens and pencil. All right, let's take a look at this. How do you balance a chemical equation? You have the same number and same type of atoms on each side, and they should be the same. And my advice to you, which has worked for me for many years, is leave hydrogen oxygen last. So if I go this up, aluminum, there's one here. Oh, there are two here. So how do I get two aluminum? You can't change the number or put a two here because that doesn't. But the coefficient, the number in front, you can change. 
dashed out, put a two there, and now both sides have two aluminum. I'll go this way because I'm just lazy. It's easy. Hydrogen, I'm going to leave that for last. Sulfur, one sulfur here. One times three. Remember, in a bracket, you multiply the number in times the number out. Three sulfur, well, that's not balanced, so how do I get three sulfur on this side? I just put a three there, and now I have three sulfur. And if you notice, I've taken care of everything but oxygen and hydrogen, so now I'm going to do that. No hydrogen there. Three times two, six hydrogen. And now, no hydrogen there. Two, how do I get that to six? Well, put a three because I can't change that. Now I have six hydrogen. And all that's left is oxygen. So let's look at this side. Three times four, 12 oxygen. Four times three, 12 oxygen. And that's everything. Let's see if I did it right. And the reason I like writing this underneath is I can check. Two aluminum, two aluminum, three sulfur, three sulfur. Six hydrogens, six hydrogen, wow. And 12 oxygen, 12 oxygen, six cents. And that's how you do that. Oh, let's do another one. These are fun. See this okay? How can you see it okay? Check and see if you're being honest. And remember, even odd. I taught you that on Wednesday. Just a chance to practice it today. Yes, that's CL. My great handwriting is hard to read, but it's CL. If they're connected, it's one symbol. Luckily, on my tests, I type. I don't handwrite them out. Oh, that would be awful. That would be brutal. That'd be cruel and unusual punishment. I think that's still outlawed by the Supreme Court. <coughs> And the question is, how do you do this? Well, you leave oxygen and hydrogen for last. OK, I'll do that. One potassium, one potassium, one chlorine, one chlorine. So far, so good. But oops, three hydrogen, I three, I three oxygen, three, two oxygen. There's no way I can multiply a whole number. Coefficients are always whole numbers times three to get two. There's no way I can multiply a whole number times two to get three. So what do I do? Even odd trick. I call it a trick, but it's a skill. And you say, what number do these both divide into equally? 
Well, the easiest way is multiply them, and that's six. And if I had wanted six oxygen on this side, I'd put a two there. Two times three is six oxygen. If I wanted six oxygen on this side, well, put a three there. Three times two is six oxygen. Now I'll go back and say, oh, I have two potassium. How do I do that? I'll put a two in front of there. And now I have two potassium. And now two times one, two chlorine. And then over here, two times one, two chlorine. And now I'll do my final check. And that is, do I have the same type and same number of atoms on both sides of the arrow? Remember, these are reactants, these are products. And six oxygen, six oxygen. Two potassium, two potassium, two chlorine, two chlorine, success. And that's how you do even odd. And if you don't know that, I call it a trick, but skill, life can be difficult. All right. I like to say, recommend that all of you consider doing the practice problems. I have balanced chemical equations. And I believe, if I remember correctly, if you want to do more, I have a link to a nice web page that has a lot of nice balanced chemical equations to practice with. Finally, let's talk about some really important chemistry. And that really important chemistry is the concept called the mold. By the way, the mole in chemistry is not a furry little animal that runs around, digs holes in the ground. A mole is a chemist counting unit. It's the counting unit chemists use. You should know that. Ooh, hold on. Everybody got this down? Once, once twice. subtle today again. All right, the mole. The mole is the chemist counting unit. If I were to say to you, go to the supermarket and get me a dozen eggs, you know a dozen is 12. If I were to say, go to Krispy Kreme and get me a dozen donuts, which I need like a hole in my head, but you know that's 12. And if you said, how many eggs are in this car carton? And I said 12, you know that's a dozen. A dozen is that unit for bakers and egg makers. But chemists use the mole. And the mole is probably one of the most important concepts in all of chemistry, because knowing the mole and what you can do with it allows chemists to make things like this plastic bottle, the soap you use to cough, wash your hands, assuming you did use soap to wash your hands, and all the other things, this plastic, the ink in this pen, everything. So the mole is a very important concept. Now, one definition of a mole is a mole is a unit that contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units. That means if I had a mole of eggs, I'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a lot. Now, if you go online to reputable sites, you can see the mole and Avogadro's number to six, no, I take it back, I saw it last night, I was checking, nine significant figures. Why somebody would ever need that, I don't know, but somebody's calculated that. I use three significant figures. This is not an exact number, this is a calculated number. It's called Avogadro's number because the great Italian chemist Avogadro did a lot of work with how many molecules are in a certain amount of gas, and that came out to be a mole. And he, that's why. 
actually the person who came up with the name Mole was uh, Wilhelm Ostwald, who was a German chemist. And Mole comes from the German word molecule. And that's where they came. And actually, 100 years before that, we came up with the name. There were already the concept of what a mole was was being discussed in the literature of chemistry. All right, so what does this all mean? I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. I have a mole of students. I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd students. Oh, remember the first day I told you you learn a lot of personal stuff about Dr. White? Well, it's time to learn some more personal stuff. Even though it was just the end of December, but it's coming up next December again. My birthday. My Perfect wish for my all-time favorite birthday gift, and there's time for you to start collecting for it, is I would like a mole of pennies. That's all I like, a mole of pennies. It's just pennies, but it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you do the math, that's 100 million piles, and each pile has a billion pennies or a billion dollars in pennies. And that's probably all the money that ever has and is and will be on this planet. This is the mole of pennies. So if you ever ask somebody, ask me, what does Dr. White want for his birthday? The answer is a mole of pennies. In other words, pennies or anything, a mole of whatever, is a lot. Now, I'm going to be, oh, hold on. Everybody, can I have your attention? Everybody take a nice deep breath. Let it out. Take another one. Let it out. Are you all relaxed? Stay relaxed. We're going to do some math. Stay relaxed, and I'll teach you how to do that. Now, whenever you have something, one thing equal another. You can write two ratios. And it turns out this is a very important aspect or part of math and chemistry. One ratio is you can take one side and divide it by the other. Another ratio, these are not equal, they're separate ratios. You can take the other side and divide it by this side. So whenever I have A equal B, you can always create two ratios. A divided by B and B divided by A. Therefore, if I have one mole equals Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things, I can write two ratios. 6.02 this side divided by one mole. And the other way, one mole divided by this. Oh, I should mention about 10, 15 years ago, someone had the bright idea, let's drop the E at the end of mole, and so it's more like molecule, came from molecule. And I don't know why. And could have this Dr. White doesn't change, and I still use the E. If you want to use without the E, feel free to, I don't. But if you look online, a lot of places now I use it without the E. All right, so what this means is Avogadro's number equals one mole, and you can have two ratios. Because of that, we're talking chemistry now, this is important. I will give you this in important information. In the past, I have students to memorize this, but I've cut down the way on the memorization, but still, you should know how to use it. One mole in chemistry equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. If I have a mole of gold, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. 
if I have a mole of water, there are water molecules in there, lots and lots, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. And because of that, I can come up with two ratios, just like this, A equals B. Take this side, divide it by that side. This is one ratio. Here's another ratio. And it turns out this is very useful. So whenever you have one mole in chemistry is equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. And you can write two ratios. All right, a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to teach you one of the most important things I ever got taught early on in high school. I was taught this by, I can still remember, it was AP Chemistry, Mr. Salmers did a great job. He beat it into all of our brains. I will be teaching you unit analysis. And you'll find out unit analysis is your good buddy, your good friend. It has been my good buddy and good friend for a long time. Also, over the next five to ten weeks, I will be going for the Guinness Book of World Record, saying the most times, your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. I'll say it so many times, you might even have nightmares about it. But it's for your uh, benefit, and you'll find out it is your good buddy, your good friend. Well, it says mole frack this time. We better get to work. Sort of the following. Question is, how many atoms silver are in 5.114 moles of silver? Well, what do we do? Well, I like to do, first of all, you see me do this, what am I trying to find? And silver's chemical symbol is Ag, and therefore I'm trying to find atoms of silver. Now, what am I given? I have this. Once I write this down, I never have to look at this again. And it's a good way of what, don't get scared, but I'll use the term word problems, how to solve word problems. This is a problem written in words. Now, how do we proceed? You use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. And the first thing you do is, the only thing I have to work with is this number. And it's important to put the units. So I have 5.114 moles of silver. Now, what units do I want my answer in? Atoms of silver. So I'm going to go over here, put my equal sign, and put the units I'm trying to get. Now, how do you go from there to there? Use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. And if I can have a ratio that will convert that to this, what do I use? <laughs> Here's where unit analysis shines. Whatever unit you're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever units I'm trying to get rid of goes underneath the ratio. Now, before I put in the numbers, let me remind you about something. In math, anything divided by itself becomes the number one and is canceled out. So, moles divided by moles becomes the number one and I'm left with the correct units. 
And it wasn't that hard because I used my good buddy, my good friend, in analysis. Now, where do we get the numbers that we put in there? I'm going to come over here because I want to leave this up. One mole of an atom or molecule equals Avogadro's number in atoms or molecules. By one mole of atoms, it's equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And remember, when you have A equals B, you can write two ratios, A divided by B and B divided by A. Let's go over here. Hopefully you won't get a sore neck from me coming back and forth. And that was a lame joke. Won't be that ever again. So, where do I find a ratio? Atoms to moles. And if you look over there, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms equals one mole. And therefore, I can do the ratio this. <laughs> And now, before I do pick up my calculator, another important part of unit analysis, your good buddy, your good friend, remember, I'm going to get his book a world record. Hopefully, some of you is keeping count. Moles of silver, if I do this multiplication, just the units, Down, but for now, since you're all rookies on this side, well, if we do the math here, anything divided by itself becomes the number one, which cancels out. What units am I left with? The ones I want. So I know this divided by this becomes the number one, and that cancels out. I'm left with atoms of silver, which is what I'm trying to find. And now I go to my calculator. calculator, you put in 5.114 times 6.0223, hit enter, and here's the number I get. Now, on all tests, you see it on test one, it will say please use proper significant figures for all calculating answers. We come here, this is four significant figures. This is not an exact number, it's three significant figures. Therefore, our answer should be three significant figures. How do I round that off to three? Keep the three, keep the zero, keep the seven. Use eight to round off. Is that four or less or five or higher? Hopefully, I'll pick five or higher. Therefore, I drop that and everything else, increase the seven to eight, and that would be three oh. 3.08 times 10 to the 24. And that's how you use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Let me go through it again. When you read the problem, you figure out what are you being asked to find with units. You also put down what you give given. And it turns out the only place you can start is with this number, that's all you're given. 
And the key to unit analysis, your good buddy, your good friend, is you put the units you want to get to. And then you say, if I can use a ratio, just like you use a ratio, how many eggs, how many dozen eggs is 36? And the answer is three, if I did it correctly. And you do it in your head, you're just not thinking you're using unit analysis or conversion, but that's what this is. So, I, whatever units I'm trying to get to, I put on top. Whatever units I'm trying to get rid of, I put underneath. And I say, where do I get these numbers? Where can I get a ratio of moles to atoms? Right here. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms equals one mole. Remember, A equals B, there are two ratios. And I'll write those two ratios. So whenever you have one thing equal to another, you can have two ratios. What I'm teaching you now is you have one mole equals Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms, and you can generate either of those ratios, which is how I got the numbers that I put in here. Another one, I apologize, whoever cleaned the board last night did an awful job. Uh, I have to call maintenance. We have this problem every once in a while. We can look at this semester. Question is, how many moles water are in 7.11 times 10 to the 15th molecules of water? Four points each, maybe even five. So how do you do this? When you look at a problem, this one I'll do, I will share. What am I being asked to find? How many moles of water? What am I given? The number of molecules of water. And now, once I have this, I do not have to read this ever again. And what do I do? I use my good friend, my good buddy, I told you I'm going to the Guinness Book of World Record, unit analysis. And the only number I have to start with is this. It's important when you use unit analysis to put the units down. Otherwise, it won't work for you, which has sad. Now, what units do I want my answer in? Well, I took the time to figure out I want moles of water. So I'm going to put that after the equal sign. Now, if I could go from here to here, in one ratio, something divided by something else, what do I do? I use unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. So I'm trying to get the moles of water. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of, do I want this answer, this unit, my answer? No. So I'll put that underneath.
because I know anything divided by itself equals the number 1. So this divided by that will cancel out. Now, where do I get the numbers that I put in there? Well, I know one mole of an atom or an element or a molecule or a compound equals Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. And therefore, I have these two ratios. Now, which ratio do I want to use? Well, what do I have on top already? Units, moles. So I'm going to pick from there one. What do I want under here? Molecules. Look over there. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, before I pick up my calculator, I'm going to use my good buddy, my good friend, unit analysis again, check if I set it up right. And here, molecules divided by molecules equals the number one. And what am I left with? Units, moles. And that's right. Let me show you something if you set it up wrong. Again, this is wrong, but how can you tell it's wrong? Well, what's my answer supposed to be? Moles of water. If I do this multiplication and division, what units will I get? Well, I'll get molecules, water times molecules, water divided by one mole of water. And that's the actual unit, molecule squared water per mole. That's not what I want. So that tells you, you made a mistake. And that way you can tell that I get this upside down. And the answer is, it did. And that's why it's wrong. And the quick way of checking is, molecules, water, divided by that becomes number one, cancels out, I'm up with this. So right units, I'm on the right track. And now I can go to my calculator. And this is the number my calculator gives me. And now, that's not the right number to put down. You have to use proper significant figures. And if we look at our calculation, this has three significant figures. And I just remembered I forgot to tell you something. The number one in one mole is an exact number. So it's not used to determine significant figures. Hold on. That number one. And therefore, three, three, my answer should be three. How do I round that off to three? I'll give you three seconds to figure it out. Give me eight seconds. Seven point two, seven point seven, seven point eight, seven. Time's up. All right, three significant figures. Keep the one. Keep the one. Keep the eight. The one after an eight is used to round off. That's four or less. I drop all those numbers afterward. It's 1.18 times 10 to the minus 8, which means it's a very small amount of moles. Even though that's a lot of molecules, it's still less than one mole, which our number shows us. And that's how we do it.
have some fun. Why don't you try this one for yourself? And the question is, if you have 8 point, eight point one one four moles HCl, hydrochloric acid, then how many molecules of HCl are there? Have fun. And use your good buddy, your good friend, your analysis. don't have your calculator, just set it up. That's fine. You all are ready for a nice weekend. It's supposed to be good weather. I have time to wash my car, which is dirty beyond dirty. And I'll get the great laughs too. do this. And the first thing I like to do when I have a word problem is when you're being asked to find. And you're being asked to find molecules HCl. Put the units and what chemical. This later on you'll see that's important this semester. And what are you given? And you also know one mole of something equals Avogadro's number. That will be given to you important information. Now, there's only one thing I can start with. is this. I can convert it in one ratio, using a ratio. What units do I want to get to in my answer? I'll figure it out right there. And that's molecules of HCl. And now, if I look at this, it's time to use your good body, your good friend, unit analysis. Whatever you're trying to get to, the units go on top of the ratio. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of, I don't want this in my answer. I'm going to divide by it, put it underneath the ratio. Where do I get these numbers? I get my exercise this morning and come over here and tell you one mole 
equals Avogadro's number. Therefore, you have these two ratios. I'm going to use the top one. And therefore, if I come over here, for every one mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HCl. Before I pick up my calculator, I'll take this, divide by that, cancels out. Remember, anything divided by itself equals 1. And what units am I left with? The ones I want. If you don't get the right units before you pick up your calculator, you're always going to get the wrong answer. And now, since I know I'm on the right track, I'm going to go to my calculator. That's the number I get. If we look at this, this is four significant figures. Avogadro's number for my class and work I've always done, three significant. My answer should be three <laughs> significant. How do I round that off? Keep the four, keep the eight, keep the eight. And then the next four, that's what I used to round off. I hope you all agree that's four or less. Therefore, I drop all that and I have 4.88. times 10 to the 24th molecules of HCl in these many moles. It turns out knowing this is important chemistry. Now, important tip for my test. If you just wrote down the answer and it was right, I'll give you full credit. If you write down the answer and nothing else and it's wrong, I get you zero points. Now, if you show your work like this, and put the wrong number here. Let's say you put 85 here, which is quite wrong. But you did all this, I'm going to say, oh, you made a math error. I'll take off one point, math error, and you get three out of four. If it's five, four out of five. So it always pays to show your work on the test. And let's go through it again. We figure out what are we being asked to find? What are we given? We put down what we're given. Some ratio equal. Put the units down. You're a good buddy, your good friend. Put whatever you're trying to go get to on top of the ratio. Whatever units you're trying to get rid of underneath. Where do I get those numbers? One mole equals Avogadro's number. And with that, I'm going to let you out about a whole 60 seconds early so you get a good start on your weekend with the other classes. And with that, have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. I recommend you practice problems.